Hello Geeks and Gamers, Noelle here, and today we are going to visit the River Kingdoms. If you are looking for a setting with high stakes politics, court drama, ceaselessly quarreling nation states that hold a population with an unquenchable thirst for freedom, then you are in the right place. But before we float our boats down the mighty Selen River, let me show you how you can support the Geeks and Gamers tabletop channel. Please consider supporting us on our mission to bring guilt-free gaming to the tabletop community by liking this video, subscribing to our channel, and possibly even becoming a channel member for access to exclusive videos, Geeks and Gamers tabletop emojis, and more. If you found this video particularly helpful, please consider leaving a tip using the Super Thanks feature located next to the like buttons at the bottom of the video. Located on the continent of Aviston, in the marshes of the Selen River Valley, the River Kingdoms are a loose collection of small, independent states, forever vying for greater power and resources. Many nation-states may only hold a thousand or so souls, and will likely not see too many years beyond the death of the Founder. The lawless nature attracts all manner of criminals, outcasts, and the generally downtrodden seeking freedom. But while the River Kingdoms offer freedom, life is not easy to build in the forest and marshes. Most inhabitants come with little to no money, and what skills they may carry with them are often ill-suited in the harsh frontier. The lack of stability in the kingdoms doesn't help its people's fortunes either, deterring commerce and travel in the region. There is no central government in the River Kingdoms, only the Outlaw Council, which meets annually in the well-established Daggermark. Here, lords representing the current nations air grievances and discuss foreign threats. The city-states represented at the council varies greatly year to year, as petty lords rise and fall constantly. Outside the Outlaw Council, each city-state will be ruled by its own smaller council, lord, or despot. As there is nearly constant warfare between nations, the Outlaw Council is really more of a formality. More weight is given to the most stable nations, such as Daggermark, Seven Arches, Tymon, and Patax. The most notable accomplishment of the Outlaw Council is the creation of the River Freedoms, six tenets which all nations follow that are as close to laws or rights as you'll find throughout the kingdoms. They are as follows. Say what you will, I live free. This is essentially the Kingdom's First Amendment, or right to free speech. However, one should be warned that words can have harsh consequences. Even so, lords are inclined to be lenient with dissenters to avoid more violent outbursts. Oath breakers die. An oath is no light matter in the River Kingdoms, and once made, you'll be expected to hold up your end of the bargain or die trying. This tenant also gives the aggrieved party the right to punish or prosecute the Oathbreaker. This has led to some unintended consequences in the region, such as traders shying away from business for a fear of commitment. Walk any road, float any river. This secures the freedom to travel throughout the kingdoms, including the freedom from tolls. It also ensures that no lord can own the Selen River, which Pretty much all trade is conducted on through the region. Courts are for kings. Now the basic meaning here is that all laws in the kingdom are flexible. Basically every nation will have its own set of laws and anyone who chooses to enter, be they king or scoundrel, must follow them, no matter how arbitrary. As you can imagine, this leads to few and far between poppin' visits by neighboring lords, most who opt to send liaisons in their stead. Slavery is an abomination. Now, this may seem like a no-brainer to our modern sensibilities, but slavery is still practice on Galarian, especially in Chaliacs. However, every man is his own in the River Kingdoms, and it is estimated that one-third of the population is either escaped slave or families of escaped slaves. The practice is considered a vile abuse, and anyone who served in a slaving organization can never hold office in the kingdoms. You have what you hold. This may be the most difficult of freedoms for outsiders to grasp, as it draws a distinction between burglary the taking of someone's property without their knowledge, and robbery, 
which allows the victim to face their robber and perhaps repossess their property. Burglary is punishable under the law. However, robbery is allowed and often commended. Now, you may have noticed that there is no mention of religion among the six tenants. And that's because religion can be freely practiced throughout the river kingdoms, including such cults as Hansper and Garona, which are almost universally banned throughout the continents of Avestan and Garand for their heinous rites and rituals. But most inhabitants favor deities that prize freedom, such as Desna or Caden Kalian, though gods that honor thievery, warfare, and murder are also popular, like Garum, Kalistra, and Norgaber. If you're a player looking to bring a little bit of the River Kingdoms into a build, why not try out playing an escaped slave hailing from one of the now defunct River Nations? You could serve as a cleric or champion for Desna, bringing freedom to the oppressed all over Golarion. Want something a little less honorable? Why not try out being a former assassin for one of the many quarreling petty lords? Or better yet, why not be an aspiring river monarch yourself? This background is available through the Lost Omens World Guide and will grant you the society skill, politics lore, and the courtly graces skill feat. If you're a GM looking to run a campaign in the River Kingdoms, there is no better place for political intrigue, court drama, harrowing assassination attempts, petty squabbles, and all-out warfare. Perhaps your players are accompanying a rising nation's lord to his first outlaw council, and you are there to protect him from threats. Or you could be in the employ of a lord looking to topple a neighboring nation. Better yet, have your team try to win over the hearts and minds of the people to form a new nation and rise to glory. Or perhaps die trying. But either way, it should be an enjoyable experience. That concludes our trip to the River Kingdoms. I hope you enjoyed this video and found the information useful. Please remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and consider joining our Gilded server, where you can chat with me and the rest of the Geeks and Gamers tabletop crew, as well as our growing fellowship. You can even find a table to play at, and it's all free. Just click the link in the video description below. May all your games be guilt-free and fun, and I will talk to you later. Thank <laughs> you.